Today we've got the top three exercises you can use with resistance bands for your legs. I mean, everyone's gone through it throughout their life. You're, you're heavy in the weight room. You're trying to become the best athlete. Then you get a little bit older. You're not working out anymore to that extreme, but you know, you got to keep these things strong. You got to figure out a way to uh, keep moving so that you can do your recreational sports. So here it is. Top three exercise. Of course, you've got body weight squats, but they're going to be a little bit different. You strap on K bands, put the long band on the front, short band on the back. And I'll tell you, if you have never done a body weight squat with a set of resistance bands on, the idea that your body has to resist your knees being pulled in amplifies a body squat tenfold. I mean, it's, so if I'm if I'm doing a leg work and I'm using the K bands, is that a strength element or is that a flexibility element? What what is that doing for me? Well, your your squats are going to be big cardiovascular, but it, the greatest thing about squats is for like knee health. So I used to do traditional squats all the time. You keep your knees behind your toes. You sit way back in your hips. You lift heavy, heavy loads. But as time has gone on and my knees have become a little weaker, it seems as though the flexibility aspect is becoming more and more important. So the things that I've been doing is doing very front-loaded squats, balls of my feet, letting my knees move far over my toes, pirouette-style squats that are all body weight-based. And I'll do those for a minute to a minute and a half at a, at a time. And as the sets progress, I add more and more resistance with K-bands. I'm no longer squatting uh, with heavy weights on my back. I'm no longer doing, uh, I mean, I used to be able to do uh, weight on the bar and doing walking lunges with 45s on each side. Exercises like that, fully loaded, moving. But now it's more of a traditional style let me get range of motion in my body. Let me get blood flow and let me keep the strength that I have, if not build a little bit in a format that doesn't kill me. Yeah, that it seems to be that it's it can be a little bit of stress or pain, but it's a lot easier on you than because people are getting away from lifting weights, I think. Yeah, so the bands themselves, when you're wearing K-bands, they're not going to slip, they're not going to move. And when you go up and down, you want to make sure that you keep those knees apart a little bit. You want to keep them wherever you're at. So if you're working in a narrow position, those knees should stay right in line. Don't let them leak into the middle. That's going to be your number one thing you're going to do wrong. We've added resistance. You let your knees slide in. That is not what you want. You want to keep them in line with wherever you're at. If you're doing a pirouette squat and your knees are out just a bit, that's the line at which you want to keep them. If you're doing a wide sumo squat, that's the line that you want to keep them in. And as your knees move far apart like that, your glutes and quads are going to be on fire with the resistance bands. So what does that mean when my knees start to come in? Well, if you add some resistance, technically K-bands are pulling your legs in. Well, your glutes are in charge of keeping your femur out, stabilizing the joint. So if you're pulling the resistance bands in and you're moving through a range of motion that activates your glutes, that is the amplifier, right? You've got a femur being pulled in. Your glutes have to fire more to keep the femur out. So as long as you keep your knees in line when you're doing it, what do you get? more muscle activation. You take your normal everyday body weight squat that seems way too easy for most everybody unless it's really long durations and then you kick it up a notch with heavy, heavy resistance bands around your legs. It can be a huge benefit. It's similar to doing exercises that are cardio in nature, but strength in nature. You know, they're, it's a very good combination exercise. Body weight squat, high on the list. Number two, You've got to do the lunges. Now, you got varieties of lunges as well, right? Of course, you've done the P90Xs. We've all done the insanities. You've seen them going through the years. If you're working out at home, squats, lunges, these types of exercises are going to be number one high on the list. So what is the benefit of doing lunges? Lunges is great for your hips. It's great for range of motion. If you want uh, a nice caboose, if you want nice quads, if you want strength in your body, oftentimes you need range of motion with strength. That's the best thing about lunges is you're in an extended position in a split position that you build strength and flexibility. So if you're working out at home and you're only doing squats, you need to do lunges. But I will say, if you haven't done lunges in six to eight months, I promise you, day one, you better take it easier. You're not going to be able to get <laughs> Don't off. Don't go to the, the blue bands. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> well, you're not going to be able to get off the bathroom stool. If it's you, not if like you, doing uh, squats on a squat rack, you know. No, yeah, yeah. So a lunge, start a little high in those. Don't get too awful deep. But a lot of these types of exercises, when you're working out at home and you're looking to boost them up a little bit with resistance bands, 
just do them for time. You don't need repetitions. You need to do them for time. And if in that time duration, you still have a lot left in the tank, then add more resistance next set. Keep it super simple. You're just using resistance bands. You're adding to it. But most of the time, any of these online workouts and things you may be doing, they already have time set up for them. So just put the bands on when you do them and it'll fit in well. Two different forms of lunges though. If you've got a little bit of bad knee or knee-ish achiness, reverse lunges should be your go-to. You wanna step back instead of forward. Big game changer in the way that you're gonna feel in your knee. I would challenge you to utilize assistance and do some of those forward knee style split squats with assistance to take a little bit of load out of your body because I promise you it'll fix you right up. I couldn't do walking lunges forward without getting a little bit of a knife in my right knee for years. And I've really started trying to take a lot of time and work on my hips and my range of motion through my knee doing those split forward lunges like that. And what I've found is it's nearly completely gone away right now anyway. You know what I mean? It seems like everything always changes over time, but right now it's feeling really good. So try to do lunges where you're kind of sinking out over your foot, extend them out a little bit farther, get full range of motion. A lot of times if you're not very advanced in a lunge, it's pretty easy to go out there heavy on your heel, strike on your heel and then go straight down. But sometimes if you've got a little bit of a wonky knee, you'll find that that doesn't feel very good. So you just don't do them. Right. So, so now are you going to, are we staying traditional or are we going to go out a little bit farther? Sort of in the, well, what taking I, that knee out a little bit farther on well, a front lunge probably. Well, what I like to do is actually take a little bit of a shorter step. If you take long steps, then you have to be heel heavy always. If you take a little bit of a shorter step, it allows you to use the ball of your foot and when you move forward into your knee area or when you're really trying to get a lot of bend out of that front side, now you can actually accomplish that. If you've taken too far of a lunge, you know, your traditional loaded lunges a lot of times is that. You've got a bar, you step out to where you're nice and neutral in your foot, if not heel heavy, and you'll go up and down trying to load your hips. Well, in this scenario, if you're just walking with, you know, resistance bands doing these, we can accomplish great range of motion without too much of a load. So take a little bit of a shorter step so the strike is more towards the ball of your foot and then roll out onto your heel. And you'll see that those lunges with the K-bands on are gonna give you far more activation than just doing one on your own. And what you'll really feel it on is on your backside. Your backside glutes, when you're taking and holding that separation point, you're gonna feel an awful lot of tension in your glutes going to add to the exercise. So when I'm doing that on my back leg, should I be focusing on trying to keep that back leg as straight as possible or have a little slight bend in it? Well, you bring up a good point. You know, if you're not actually loading both feet, a lunge feels rather different. And what I mean by that is oftentimes you can lunge forward with a heavy foot. Your weight shifts towards that front side. And most people I'm sure have felt this before you lunge forward and then you come up and it's almost like all the weight moves back on your back foot. And then you're stepping forward and an awful lot of that weight moves forward. But if you can get good at keeping your body weight centralized on the balls of your feet, what you'll find is while you're working your legs, you're gonna get more range of motion in your hip flexors. Everyone's got too tight of hip flexors. Everyone's spending too much time sitting down. Everyone needs to loosen their hip flexors. The best way to do that in lunges is to load the balls of your feet on both sides. When you step out, you're going to feel that if you take a little shorter step, just as I was saying before, and you move forward, the same goes for the back foot. If you roll up on the tip of your toe, your hip flexor will nearly turn off. The load will move forward. If you sit on the ball of your feet or on the ball of your back foot and keep that load heavy, you will feel an extreme stretch through your hip flexor. But with the bands on, you're not only going to feel the stretch on the front side, but you're going to activate the glutes. So you're kind of going to get a full, a very, very high engaging exercise. The body is going to feel it from front to back. You load the front side, you've got the glute fire and that big separation with the bands. I mean, you'll feel it hands so down doing you, lunges with and without. If you take the shorter step, then is it okay to go out, meaning take your knee out a little bit farther? It's going to, or, and, and, Help me out a little bit with that. So you're talking your front knee side? Your is that front correct? knee side. Yeah, so yeah. your front knee side, you can leak over the toe uh, 
or you you can hold it vertical. You know, the traditional approach to lunges was never knees over toes. Mm -hmm. You know, the knees over toes movement, I feel like we've been talking about this a lot in the last couple of weeks, and it, it kind of gets your wheels spinning. But I would just listen to your body. If you're lunging out and you feel any kind of discomfort or anything, you can do assisted lunges. It's very easy to do. If you have a suspension strainer and stand in between it, you can really guide your body weight a lot easier. I would highly recommend that on people that have not been doing any types of exercises for a long time. If you can get range of motion in your hips from lunging, it's going to benefit you greatly. So get the depth. You can let the knee slide over. You can keep the knee back. I would probably do a little bit of everything. When in your life are you always in the exact same situation? So should you alternate it maybe with walking lunges, forward and backwards, or what? again, going back to the pulse, up and down? Uh, yeah, you could do any of those types of formats. Uh, mix it up a little bit. You know, One format would be, just as you said, you sit in a split position, you get everything nice and loaded, and you just move up and down. That would be one version. Another variation would be, say you've got 10 feet and you want to do a walking lunge 10 feet, maybe even do 10 feet in reverse on the way back. Another version would be all stationary reverse lunges. You're standing still, front leg stays stationary, you step back, step up, step back, step up. There's a bunch of different types of variations of lunges. And the most important thing is just if you add some resistance to those, you're going to find that your body weight exercises don't just run out of gas in two weeks run out of motivation because they're not doing anything for you anymore. You can add more and more resistance and keep getting results doing those types of exercises. I think that when I'm doing walking lunges, you know, and when I'm training, a lot of it is take the lunge, step up, take the lunge. I really like to work towards lunge to lunge. Does that make sense? So that you're one right into the other without. Do so you mean uh, step right through? You don't step right through. Yeah. And it's great for your balance as well. If you're a little bit uh, more of a beginner or you haven't done things in a split position, when you take your step and come up in the middle, you might take that little tap, get your balance, then move forward. But I see what you mean. As you get a little bit better, yeah, step right through and work on your balance as and well. And then you'll think you're pretty cool going forwards. And then you do it backwards and go, whoa. Well, something about moving backwards, you always get a little bit, uh, always test the balance. It's one of the best things you can do. Yeah, whenever you go forwards, always mix them in back. Number three. Third exercise. This one's going to be a little bit funny for some people. If you don't understand the movement, I've, I've always called them pointers. You get on all fours on the floor. And, you know, I know if you're a guy and you see something like this, you're like, I'm not trying to work on my caboose. But I will tell you, if you've never done a pointer before and you have a bad core, bad back, tightness in that area where you're a little wonky, this exercise is by far one of the best core exercises that you can do That'll help with your performance and any activities that you're trying to do. It's very simple. You sit in all fours. You want to make sure that you've got your core nice and tight. Do not sag in your back. It's very easy to do that if you're being lazy. You got your body weight on your hands. You're sitting on your knees. You let your back sag down a little bit. You don't want to do that. You can look at a person doing the same exact exercises in two different ways, and you can barely even tell the way they look because of their T-shirt. It's a little loose or something. If you let your body drop, you're not going to turn on any of the right muscles. If you kind of tuck your hips under you and you're a solid rock, then when you do this exercise, it's going to be very beneficial. You'll use your opposite arm, opposite leg. So if we're going to do our left leg and our right arm, you want to just be exactly what it sounds like, a pointer. You are super tight all the way through. You don't have your hips rolled back, your butt sticking up. That's not what it's about from top to bottom, straight as an arrow, and you're going to drive through with your heel, not your toe. If you use your heel, you'll feel it through your hamstring and through your glutes with the bands, and it will be pretty darn intense. You're going to go out, you'll hold for maybe six to eight seconds, then you'll drop down and then use that same arm and go up again. Three or four times on that side, and then you'll switch over to the other side. But make sure that your first repetition settles in real nice. And what I mean by that. If you rush out there and then you come back, sometimes you don't really feel the full extension. So sit out there on your first repetition whenever you start on your right hand. And then when you move to your left, that first repetition, get up there and get you a good point for 10 or 15 seconds. Get everything lined up, drive through with your heel, and then you'll feel all the way down your back turn on. And then after that, you can go back to that five or six second hold three, four, you know what I mean? Just simple motions. There's a lot of different formats of this drill that you can do. Um, 
I think the, you can do that if you did it quickly. I don't. You're you're really getting very little benefit out of you, that. Most exercises are movement exercises. This one's going to shine an awful lot more on the stationary aspect. So uh, some varieties or some variations for you. You can very easily do this thing where you're doing one repetition for 25 second hold, then do the other side. Uh, another variation would be what I explained before. Longer holds, but much shorter. So maybe eight second holds, bring them in, go back out. Another version would be uh, simply taking your hand and your leg out and then alternating each time and holding 10 seconds. There's a lot of different variations for this, but the form has to be high on the list. And if you've done this exercise without resistance bands, I would challenge you to go back to it with resistance bands because these three exercises with resistance band, you can literally work out at your home, no problem, still get your leg exercises in, build a little bit of cardiovascular endurance, and keep your body healthy. I mean, that's what it's all about. Keep it functioning correctly and building strength in the right ways. These three exercises should be added to about any workout regimen. So if you're and you're wearing the K-bands, it's not just a glute exercise. You're really getting a full body exercise. Well, it really just depends on the angle of the movement. Uh, anything out front, you're going to get the quad a little bit more. Anything out the back, you're going to get some hamstring if your leg's nice and straight. Anything with the knee bend, you're getting hip flexor. If you've never done abs before with K-bands, I know it's a little off topic here for this discussion, but uh, it is a game changer. Go ahead and try to do a 15-minute ab routine with K-bands on, and you you're, you about want to throw up. That's a it's, really good burn. It, it's just uh, everything is connected in your body. So if by putting on resistance bands around your legs, anytime that you've got separation, there's activation and stability going on the whole time. So it, it's... I don't know that I would exactly call it a, a full body exercise all the time, but I would tell you if you've ever squatted before with weight on your back, how fast you become winded, it's a very similar concept. Your body is under load and you get winded much quicker and everything burns depending on how you utilize the equipment. So if you want to work out at home, th this is where a lot of this stuff really shines. If you want to build strength and remain pain-free, you've got to stay strong through full range of motion. These three exercises should be added to your workouts. If you need a set of K-bands or any other workout equipment, uh, we've got it all, kbandstraining.com. We've got a lot of things there for you. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell icon. I'll uh, continue to post videos that will help you guys out in your training.